Stream the language. Hey folks, Troy Ruiz here again from Primo's Hunting. Well, it's the very beginning of February here, Liam, and, and deer season has, uh, has just ended for us here in the South, and everybody's already here at Primo's thinking about turkey season. And Liam's been working on a couple of turkey projects from last year, and him and I went there the other day talking, and he, he says, hey, he says, um, I want you to show me how to blow a turkey call. He says, I've tried, and I can get a little bit of a sound in it. He said, but I'm by no means good at it. Yeah, not, not at all. I mean, I grew up using a box call primarily, yeah. Yeah. and I've never learned how to use a mouth call. So yeah. uh, I've kind of taught myself or tried to teach myself to yeah. pretty much zero success. So Well, and, and, and some success, though, because at least you got a sound out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with Liam. I broke it down for him at learning how to start at the very beginning, from the very beginning of our calls. You know, we've got such an array of calls. This year we're coming out with some new yelpers called the Mossy Oak Mouth Yelpers, and they're done in Mossy Oak. That's, to me, that's the elite of the elite calls that we have. Their, their cuts are different. Everyone has a unique cut. Some are latex, some are prophylactic. Several calls that I gave him. I gave him calls from the very top end, which is the WP1, all the way from the original series. See, when I first started yelping on turkey calls, that was the first call I ever called on right there is a limb hanger. Limb hanger. And it was very easy to get a sound. It's two reads of clear prophylactic, which if somebody, you're trying to teach somebody how to blow a mouth call, to me, you go simple until you learn how to get those sounds. And that's what we're going to do with Liam. So Liam's already tried a couple of them just to see what would work best for him. And I know that's going to be hard for the public to do because you can't go out and buy 10 different calls and figure out what works for you. But if you're going to go spend money on calls, spend money on the less expensive calls and the lesser reads. The less reads is a lot easier. Two reads is probably better than one because a one reedy call can at times disappoint people because it's a squeaky sounding call. One of the things that Liam did already, and it's what we talked about last year, is he's beat the gag reflex. Yep. When you first decided to say, I'm going to try this, what was the first thing you, you noticed that was the most difficult part for you? The hardest part was figuring out where to put my tongue mm -hmm. and how to control my tongue from going forward on the onto the reeds because mm -hmm. that was making a high pitched sound which wasn't right and it was channeling the air wrong. It was just making too small right. of an opening for the air to move through. And so trying to figure out, and I'm still working on that, trying sure. to figure out where to put my tongue on the reeds or and how much them. pressure mm -hmm. and how much pressure is the hardest part right now the one thing i noticed that you did the first time i ever gave you a call and go ahead and put that call in your mouth and what liam does is he, he just takes the call puts it on his tongue just like we showed you in our other series and just places it in the roof of his mouth you did that no problems most people will do that and if they got a gag reflex some people can't get over it but you did good what i noticed liam was doing show me how you were yelping when you first started the first time i gave you a call now, if you look at what Liam's doing right there, he's puckering his lips. When you pucker your lips, you're channeling the air over the part of the call that you really don't need to. And when you pucker your lips, you're causing a, a sound chamber in your cheeks. Mm -hmm. Now, go back to, to what I showed you, not puckering your lips and what that did for you. Okay, and so the most important thing is being able to get a call and get a sound out of a call that works for you. Right. What I told Liam I wanted him to do is practice on getting an even sound. Go ahead and put the call in your mouth, Liam, and let's practice that one solid, straight flow of air and that one simple note. Some people can get that on the very first try, and some people it takes weeks. But once you're able to get that sound and you know where that call needs right. to be positioned in your mouth, it becomes easy. Yeah, it's it, like learning how to play an instrument early. Well, it is an instrument. Right. A lot of people don't realize that it's a musical instrument. Yeah. It's a reeded picking instrument. Picking that up is, is pretty difficult, once, but you know, you just got to practice like any other thing. It does. It, it, and the key to that is I told him, I said, once you get that sound, practice that for a week to 10 days. Mm -hmm. Aggravate the dogs. Aggravate the cats, aggravate your girlfriend, aggravate your wife. It's just a simple sound. And once you get used to that airflow and where that call needs to be, before you go anywhere else and learn how to make any yelps, highs, lows, you want to be able to control that air. It's all about controlling air, just like in a duck call. Now, when we, we learn how to get that to that point, we're going to move on to learn how to go with the highs and the lows. And that'll be on our next YouTube video for you guys.